Hello. Um, I was going to start by asking how many of you play musical instruments as well as sing. Он хочет начать свой свой семинар с вопроса: кто из вас, помимо того, что вы все поете, это мы знаем, кто из вас еще играет на каком-нибудь музыкальном инструменте? Может, поднимите руку. Lots. And what instruments do you play? Piano, piano, guitar, violin. Any others? No. So today I'm going to talk about working as as, as a musician. Um, how many people would like to be able to work as a musician when they're older? Сегодня он будет говорить о, о вашей будущей карьере и работе как музыкантом. Сколько из вас вообще, сколько из вас не занимаются музыкой как просто, ну, чем-то, что интересным для, для вас? Кто из этого хочет создать себе работу в будущем и карьеру? Есть тут кто-нибудь такой? Okay, so some. Um, today I'm going to talk about. Uh, how and where people have worked as musicians for nearly 200 years. Сегодня он расскажет вам, как и где работали музыканты за последние 200 лет. And then uh, to explain how and where they work now. И потом он расскажет вам, как и где они работают сейчас. And I'll start by some history um, and then discussion of what happens now. Сейчас сначала он начнет с немного истории, что было давно, а потом он перейдет на то, что сейчас. And I'll talk about musicians who I work with musicians in both Britain, where I come from, and also where I can in Latvia and other countries as well. И он поговорит о музыкантах как которые работают в Англии, это откуда он, он из Англии, которые работают у нас в Латвии и в других странах. А, он не включил. Окей. Окей. I'll start 200 years ago, I, before even I was born, uh, and this was a period where very many musicians got paid for playing musical instruments. That, 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 how do you do this? Let us say that only many who were musicians, they were usually not paid. They were just paid for it completely. Um, the only people who could employ musicians were rich families, uh, the royal family in Britain, uh, and rich landowners, uh, and some of the rich German families that lived in this part of the world. Um, some cities uh, employed a few musicians, not very many, two or three. Uh, to perform in public places. And then there was an even smaller number of musicians who travelled from town to town or from city to city playing their instruments. But very few musicians were working and those who were, were mainly in large cities. So this started to change and more musicians started to get paid for playing their instruments in the later part of the 19th century. And more people moved to work in cities, and therefore there was more demand for entertainment in the evenings. Um, 
начали сами передвигаться в большие города, и из-за этого начали, начали появляться концерты и вечеринки, где играли много музыкантов. So more, uh, there were more buildings in which uh, musicians could perform, like concert halls, opera houses, theatres. These were all built, or some of them were built in the, the late part of the, the 19th century. And this meant that there was more demand for musicians, uh, both as performers, but also as, as teachers. So suddenly from, being, from there being very few musicians who were able to get paid for playing their instruments, there were several thousand in, in, in the UK. And another source of work for musicians was in the, in the army where lots of military bands were formed. But this was still not very well paid work. Uh, the conditions weren't good and uh, musicians often had to work for very short periods, short periods of time. It wasn't secure. This all began to change in the at the start of the, the 20th century when there was far the population grew in most uh, most countries, so there was far more far more people, far more venues in which musicians could uh, could play and orchestras started to form to play in these venues. And among the musicians here, which of the violin players or who would like to play in an orchestra? Okay, but the first orchestras were formed, uh, or the first large orchestras were formed uh, in London in 1904. The orchestra here was formed, the radio orchestra was formed here in 19, 1926. And these were often the first places where uh, people would get a salary, a regular income for playing their musical instruments. Um, um. So although there were more musicians, their pay was still generally not very, not very good, and the security of the job was not great. But in Britain, this changed after the First World War, when I, more musicians came back from the war, and also I, during the war, people wanted to be entertained. They wanted to go out dancing, and the, the dance halls needed musicians to accompany I, the dancing. <coughs> So musicians played in, uh, in dance.
dance halls, and they also played in cinemas. Uh, before cinemas had sound, each cinema employed an orchestra of uh, musicians as well to accompany the film. And these large uh, bands of the early 1920s were, were the first ones where some of the band leaders began to earn a lot of money from playing music. So just as lots of musicians were starting to work in Britain in cinemas, thousands of musicians were employed uh, as cinema musicians, then the technology changed and it was possible uh, to have music and dialogue and, and speech on, on, the, on, the, on the films themselves. So there was no need for musicians anymore in the cinemas. So the famous film, The Jazz Singer, I was first shown in America in 1927 and in other countries after, after that. Um, it was hugely popular and this kind of put the musicians who previously played in cinemas, uh, along with other uh, films, out, out of work. So there was lots of unemployment among musicians after 1927, 1928. So musicians had to look for different places to work. So musicians who used to work in cinemas in Britain had to find other places to work, um, and these make, tended to be mainly through radio and also through uh, making records in the recording industry. Um, in Britain and also here, um, the, radio, the new radio stations um, employed lots of musicians and formed uh, numerous orchestras to fill the time on the, on the radio. So some of these musicians had full-time, well-paid jobs for the first, the first time. Because they were paid by the state broadcaster, the BBC or the Latvian National Radio. So although there was less work in the cinema, there was other new types of work for, for musicians. Around this time, uh, musicians also started uh, to record for uh, making, making records, um, and initially it was feared that this would uh, put an end to all live music. But 
instead the recording industry created some work for musicians as well. By the time of the Second World War, um, there was more demand for, for music again for the same reason as in the First World War. People wanted to be entertained and to forget about the war. So in Britain there were still large bands playing in ballrooms for people to dance to. And in the army, uh, bands formed as well who came back after the war. Um, but after after the war, uh, new types of bands formed as as well. Particularly in uh, jazz. Uh, and music called skiffle. Which I'll show you a clip of, hopefully. So by 1954, when Elvis Presley, who's here, made his, made his first record, um, more and more records were being produced, uh, more and more artists were, were going on tour, so the, the type of work that musicians were doing and the type of people uh, who were making music had changed quite substantially. 
в эспрессе, которое, как всегда, мы, мы все знаем. Очень много музыкантов начали передвигаться по миру, передвигаться по городу и презентовать свои, свое творчество, ну, да, презентовать свое, свое творчество. And, and also because these were much smaller groups or sometimes just solo artists, it was much easier for them to travel around the world as well. At least compared to orchestras. And the other thing that changed was that increasingly the musicians were starting to write their own songs. So, for example, the Beatles um, sold millions of records in the 1960s, but they also wrote all their own songs um, and combined recording with songwriting um, and performing. So this was a very different type of work that the pop groups did compared to what the musicians and orchestras and the dance bands previously had done. They didn't have a regular income, but they could make a lot of money if they were successful. Um, so what happened in, in this period was that um, some musicians for the first time, because there was more and more records, the Beatles sold millions of records, so some uh, musicians were able to make a living purely from recording and songwriting or what they didn't need to perform live. So some musicians played only in studios on other people's records. And I'll show you a short clip uh, from a film about uh, some studio musicians called The Wrecking Crew.
so these were musicians who played only in recording studios, and as one of them said in the film, she was making more money than the President of the United States. So kind of pop and rock musicians had a different approach, and they combined uh, touring, recording, uh, and songwriting. But all of this was totally dependent on demand and people wanting to listen to their music. And this demand came from radio, from the, the television, um, and also by uh, the, the press as well. So people cared about the music and then they wanted to buy it. So while pop music was part of the market, um, the orchestras I, were often still funded by the governments, either directly or indirectly, in each country. During all this time, I, sales of records or CDs or cassettes were the main driver I, of popular music. But this begins to, to change after I, 1999 when sales of, of all these formats begin to decline. Um, this was because music was available online. And people would watch, uh, sorry, and people would no longer need to pay for CDs or cassettes. And this created a problem for those musicians who had earned their money from the recording industry. But the interesting result of this is that they've now had to rely more and more on performing live. So the major pop artists now have to perform in arenas and in festivals uh, and in football stadiums uh, in order to generate the kind of income that they would previously have done from selling records. So while, um, so while it's very easy for, for these 
stars and musicians to I uh, to make lots of money from performing in big venues. For for many musicians, it's still very very difficult to earn a living. И да, и конечно, если ты популярный, люди любят слушать твою музыку, и ты выступаешь на много концертов и туров, то ты очень легко можешь заработать большое количество денег. Но до сих пор очень много музыкантов не могут зарабатывать и еще другие работы. So there's a huge difference between what the stars earn and what ordinary musicians earn. And it's interesting to compare uh, where musicians work now with where they worked over a hundred years ago. Some of the places remain the same. So musicians sometimes perform still in theatres, churches, uh, and in dance halls. Um, but often there is less work in these places. But at the same time, lots of new places have emerged where musicians can work. Um, including television, radio, recording studios, and holiday camps, and even on cruise ships. Um, but the demand has always varied. And on the slide you can see um, two of the new types of venues that I was talking about, the uh, arena here where Muse played last year, um, and lots of the international touring artists play in Riga, and also the new concert hall that's been built in Montreal in Canada. So, to round up a few things to uh, to say about the changing nature of musical work in 200 years. Unlike the stars who play at the arenas, uh, most musicians are not wealthy and have to work really, really hard. And they often have to do more than one job. But this has always been the case. Also, uh, the conditions of work uh, are often difficult. It's often uncertain uh, when and if musicians are going to be working. The work is often uh, for short periods of time for one particular show. And then there can be long periods when the musicians are not working. And of course there are often more musicians than there are jobs. And sometimes it's very difficult for musicians I, to have a secure I, income in the same way that other professions do. So they frequently don't have health insurance or pensions. Okay. 
So I'm going to end by saying that I think there's three types of musician and three types of musical work. The first type of musician is the amateur who, who plays normally just for fun. Uh, they learn to play and they do it primarily for enjoyment, so they don't usually get paid for playing music. They may play in churches, for example. Then there's the semi-professional musician who, who makes some money from playing music but also has to do other things. And then lastly, there's the smallest group, the professional musicians who are able to earn a regular income from playing music. And for all these musicians, the main thing that they do is to perform. A lot less of them are involved in either recording or songwriting. And another way of looking at this is the types of musical work. So some musicians in orchestras have permanent work. Permanent work uh, is stable work. For example, in orchestra, you know that you are going to be a regular and you are working with your team. And a regular salary. And you have a stable and constant salary. Others work seasonally in theatres. And also there are musicians who work for the season. For example, they work in the theatre. While the spectacle is showing, they have a job and they are working. But then they are going to be looking for a new job. Or maybe I, on a summer season at a holiday camp. But most musicians have to do lots of small jobs that add up to a, a greater income. And then lots of the musicians have to do other jobs that have nothing to do with music. Okay, so to conclude, um, there are now far more working musicians than there, there were 200 years ago. But the type and size, the type and places where musicians work, have, sorry, the type of music and the places where musicians have worked have changed dramatically. And recently a survey of British musicians showed the type of work that they do outside of being a musician. So some musicians, I, as well as performing, I did work that was musical I, or music related, like teaching in universities, in colleges, or schools, or individual tuition. They would sometimes perform as session musicians in studios or for other performers. Uh, or play at weddings. And some were involved in music therapy and repairing and making instruments. And many musicians ought to supplement their income by doing other work that is freelance or short term in nature. So 
So things like uh, aromatherapy, web design, uh, taxi driving, massage, photography, and secretarial work. Uh, some of the So my conclusion is that while there is more musical work than ever, it is harder and harder for musicians and that they are still very undervalued no matter how good they are. But I would still encourage everyone who wants to play an instrument to continue doing so. Thank you. 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 Thank